uh, last week I talked about um, hypotheses um, or assumptions, as I like to call them, and uh, theory, and kind of tore them apart a bit and described different levels that I see in organizations. And, um, you know, most organizations are run off of assumptions. And the, these assumptions come from, you know, typically executives, but sometimes they were there in an organization long before an executive uh, took the position that they're in. And these uh, assumptions uh, are not, are rooted in uh, maybe what you learned in business school uh, and as I just mentioned what what already existed in the organization and so the, these the, these assumptions are ones that you have to be aware of and it's difficult often times for executives to grasp the nature of the assumptions because they manage that way for often decades uh, in many cases. Um, but even the organizations that uh, embrace uh, some scientific rigor and collect empirical data run into problems. And uh, so, you know, the theory, the, new, why does that happen? Well, theory has problems. And many executives uh, seek the elusive unicorn called proven theory. Uh, if it only really worked that way, that would be good. Uh, but science is a game really of disproving and not proving. And the best that you can do is collect evidence in your organization. Now, if you've ever had a discussion with a scientist, <laughs> um, uh, they can give you intimate detail <laughs> on their experiments that they run. Now, why do they do that? Well, it's because they can only give you the conditions in which they ran the experiment. And, uh, you know, when it worked and when it did not, and more often than not, you'll hear from a scientist that it did not. <laughs> but uh, um, it's important that if it did work or did meet the expectations of what, what they, their theory, um, that they uh, realize that it was under certain conditions that it was met. And this is the heart of why no theory is ever proven because no number of pieces of evidence will ever prove a theory. Now, does that mean you should discard all theory? No, it means that some of them are more reliable than others. And oftentimes I'll have uh, executives go and, and uh, develop some theories through steps that I take. I'll talk about at the end. Um, but then they get one uh, experiment in and you know wow we found the the golden unicorn you know type of thing and uh you know are we now have a proven theory that we go well we you know in statistics called naive one which is where you have you know one experiment you know that met what your expectations were um that that's a whole maybe a whole nother episode but um one experiment doesn't even give you enough evidence to call it reliable. Um, and there are actually numbers that, that statistically that you can get into with that. But, uh, uh, you know, theory, since it's not proven, is to become something that uh, is very difficult for executive to grasp because of the things I just mentioned about a scientist. Scientists can be a tough person for an executive to talk to, especially an executive looking for answers. Uh, but this is the, the this is the nature of theory, and uh, you know the system that you work in requires um, 
theory with scientific rigor and empirical evidence uh, to move forward, to move your organization forward. And so it is with the 95 method that I've put together uh, can, can help you accomplish this. And it begins with collecting evidence of your existing system, or as I like to call your current theory in your organization. And, and so you've got to know by virtue of doing that, you begin to unpack some of these assumptions that I talked about uh, earlier in this episode. And, you know, these assumptions uh, can be rooted out and at least understand consciously that they are things that you're operating to, uh, whether you realize it or not. Um, and, and so you have to begin by collecting that evidence of the way you do things today. And, and there's a ton of reasons why you do that. One of many reasons is if, if you're going to move a system from the way it operates today to a new way uh, of doing things, you have to know what other people in the organization are going to have to unpack in their own brains in order to move to a new way of doing things. And this is one of the reasons that I advocate for if you're going to change the work of somebody that's actually doing the work, it's, it's best done by the people doing the work um, and you supporting them as an executive. Um, so that that's step number one is understanding your current system by collecting evidence and understanding what theories that you're operating on in your organization, whether you realize it or not. And then the second thing is then from what you learn, you can develop new theories and then you can uh, experiment. And again, these are things you do on a very small scale. You don't need to blow up your, your entire organization. Uh, and you can e develop even better theories as you begin to experiment. Oh, well, this got this result. Uh, what else could we try? Oh, here's something else that we can do. Um, from what we learned about our uh, ex the existing system that we're operating in, let's try this, and we'll do some, uh, you know, through research, uh, observation, and collecting the data associated with it, you can begin to move your organization forward. And so these, to me, are the f kind of the fundamentals of really what I've put together in the 95 method. There's a lot of overlap with, um, you know, the psychology of things and the way that people think in within their organization. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, understanding what psychological change people would have to make from moving an organization from their existing system to a new system is, is uh, serious business. And, and, you, you really can't do it from the hierarchy, from the executive management group, uh, because the people making the change in the organization and doing the experimenting uh, are the ones that are going to have to work in the new way. And if they don't know how you went from point A to point B, then it, it, the results are really often uh, undesirable in most cases because people push back, you know. How do you know that? I mean, you know, and they may not say that overtly, but certainly um, <laughs> behind closed doors or at uh, water, the water cooler or uh, IMs <laughs> that people send when people work at home, um, then they, they discover, you know, that um, executives discover that them imposing their will on employees for their great new theory uh, is not the best way to go. Anyway, this is, the, you know, no theory is ever proven is, is really the uh, theme of this. Uh, you will never find the perfect uh, theory. There is no uh, golden unicorn out there. Uh, but you will find uh, theories that will uh, develop reliability under the conditions in which you experiment with them. Because conditions change, right, too. Anyway, that's what I wanted to cover this week. And remember, there is always a better way.